a lot of Grant Morrison's run on Animal Man is worth dissecting and diving into, even decades later. But there's one sequence from issue 7 that always sticks in my mind, and I thought it'd be an interesting topic of discussion about using the white space of the page in interesting ways, and thinking a little differently about the layout of comics, while still creating these kind of pop superhero books. So in this episode, I want to talk about the value of white gutter spacing as a concept and tool for timelessness. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So in this issue of Animal Man, there's a character here called the Red Mask. He's about to jump off of a building, and Animal Man is going to stop him. Now, this issue itself draws a lot of parallels to Watchmen and its visuals, including like the Red Mask's logo, which is taken directly from the cover of Watchmen issue 5, and the fact it's clearly a parody of the Red Hood from The Killing Joke, but that's something to explore for another episode or on the Patreon, because what I want to specifically look at is three pages from the end of this issue. In this sequence, Animal Man asks Red Mask to stay there while he sort of goes off and does something, and Red Mask uses that as an opportunity to jump off of the roof. The page when he lands is also obviously a Watchmen reversal, and you can you know make of that what you will, the death of silly superheroes and villains, whatever you want to call it. But what we're here to talk about mostly is that wonderful blank page with Red Mask, drawn by Chaz Trug, Doug Hazelwood, and coloured by Tatiana Wood. The gutters of comics are something that are entirely unique to the medium, right? There's really nothing else like them anywhere else. They are both hard and soft in that they are sort of hard edges that stop an image, hard edge that contains these moments of time within these boxes, and soft because it's pretty much impossible to say how much time a gutter contains. It's just sort of some time. The moment between panels two and three here, that I can do it, that I can fly, there's no way to examine the actual amount of time between those moments. It's both stasis and forward movement, all controlled by the reader, their reading speed, their willingness to, you know, actually move forward with the story, etc, etc, etc. What we do, however, is acknowledge that the white space isn't actually contained within the moment that we're witnessing. It's not in the story. The white is just, I don't know, the kind of screen that the images are projected onto, you know, the white of the wall in which the artist draws the windows to this world. We are mostly to ignore the wall and to look through the windows instead. Drawing attention to the gutters, no pun intended for drawing, is to draw attention in many ways to the artifice of comics, of the medium itself. To point out the gutter is to say, look at how constructed this all is. It's all false, it's all created. It's like pointing out the screen that the film is projected onto. It's meant to be invisible in some regard. However, a larger white space on a page isn't necessarily gutter, but rather the absence of space. It only becomes a gutter when it's between two panels, and is used as a kind of soft reset of the images before we see the next one. So in that same example here, right, going from panel 2 to panel 3, the gutter there is a white space that kind of delineates one image from the next image. It's there to tell us that those two images aren't the same thing, right, that they're not one continuous image, but rather two separate images, two separate moments in time. The gutter space is small enough that they're still connected, they're close enough to be clearly connected, but not so large that they feel like two completely different instances of time. They're still within the same sort of moment. But if I take that second panel and I just slide it all the way down, the gutter then sort of almost stops being a gutter. It becomes a new image in itself, almost. A new blank piece of space that is now communicating something more than the moment between those images. In a sense, it is instead its own image. It's communicating some idea of emptiness, of larger time, whatever it is. But it's communicating something more than just the space between two images. And some of you are watching this now and saying, all right, okay, Hass, but surely that's just what a gutter is anyway, right? But just, I don't know, a bit bigger. To which I would say, yes, you are correct. But the size of the space changes the intention to such an extent that the meaning has to change. Even if, in this example, it could just be an indication that a lot of time is passing between images, the space is asking you to read that as a lot of time between images. So to me, it becomes a new moment, almost a new panel, but it just exists as white space. But it is taking on a new role in the page, while still existing between those two images. When we put the two images back together, you don't really even read the gutter, you just move to the next image. So there is a slight difference there depending on how you use that space. So when we get to this next page, it's all white except for the red mask. It reads as the absence of imagery, right? And it's all pure time or timelessness. I think both are the same in this case in that there's no second image to move on to. So there is kind of a timelessness in this page, in this image. However, the reader will continue to read. and You'll go to the next page and in essence, you'll kill the red mask as a reader. 
in a way, it exists outside of time between those two pages that are sandwiched either side of it. And that's sort of why that page is so exciting to me, because to see it is so obvious, right? It's a splash image, essentially, but in a way that very few splash images exist, in that it's so obviously referencing this moment of kind of pure bliss of timelessness for the mass, suspended in all of time in a way that previous images with a blue background and dialogue just weren't. Each of those elements that dialogue the sky, they add something of time to the moment. They ground it in some sense of time and space. Like if there was a balloon on this page saying, I can fly, I think that would change this just a little bit too much. There'd be something we could point to as, as movement or moving time or passing time. But here there's nothing. This page is just pure empty space, negative space, a lack of progression, a lack of time, and one floating body. And by doing that, it creates this absolutely incredible moment that exists outside of reality and outside of time, a suspension before he falls back to earth and it continues. And this is very different from a splash image, like we've seen previously in this same issue, where a background will be rendered in and, you know, there might be some action happening. Here we're seeing an image of the world frozen, right? But still a moment frozen within the world. And when we go back to the negative space image, what we see here is a moment that is actually specifically removed from time. In theory, it feels like a small change if I just explain this, like, okay, just drop the background out. But because of what we spoke about before, and the idea that the gutters and white page show as the canvas that the images are being placed on, if we remove everything and leave mostly canvas, we see an image where the world itself has been eradicated. And by doing this, Morrison, Trug and Hazelwood give us this sort of euphoric moment that still exists in the context of the artifice of the comic, while utilizing the medium to create a feeling and response in the reader unlike anything else. It reveals a fundamental part of comics, that negative space that underpins everything. It can be used as much more than just a dividing line between images, but it can transcend the very worlds that are placed on it and become a much more integral part of the storytelling. We often talk about gutters as just that space between images, but in this issue of Animal Man, Morrison, Drug, Hazelwood shows that the negative space can be much more than just a breaker between panels it can enlighten us to a completely different way of seeing and experiencing a moment in time. Something to think about. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Pal Naked, you can join the Patreon page and get access to years and years of exclusive writing and content that is updated with every new episode. You should also check out Panel by Panel magazine, which is the Eisner award-winning magazine that I edit, all about breaking down comics and doing big deep dive interviews with some of the best creators in the game. Issue 58, which is out in April, actually contains a long interview with Grant Morrison about metafiction. So if you subscribe at panelxpanel.com, make sure you don't miss that issue. And finally, hit subscribe and the notification bell right here on YouTube to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.